will basically be a continuation <coughs> of, 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 uh, of our chapter 5, which is uh, the environmental aspects of dealing with uh, wind power technology. Uh, and it's expected that uh, at the end of this presentation, uh, each and every one of you will be able to know and address uh, some of the environmental issues you know, that have to do with wind power systems. Uh, now we move on, environmental impact of wind power systems. Uh, wind energy or wind power systems have both positive you know, and negative environmental impact. The positive being that uh, this particular power technology doesn't actually uh, produce any greenhouse gases you know, or it produces relatively, relatively less greenhouse gas compared to other conventional uh, power plants you know, like the coal fire power plant and crude oil based power plant and all that. So wind power technology is a very clean technology. That's one of the positive sides. It doesn't produce any pollution, you know, that that that's a good pollutant environment. Uh, and then normally in, in, in actually quantifying this kind of benefit, you know, of wind power technology not producing pollution. Uh, one way to do that is to actually uh, find, you know, the uh, amount of you know, emissions that have been avoided, you know, by going into the wind power system rather than going into other conventional source of power, you know. So let's say if you had an option to uh, install, let's say, 50 megawatts of, let's say, a coal-fired plant, and you, you, you decide not to do that, but to actually go in full-time to wind, wind power, you know, or any renewable power. Now, the, the, the benefit is that, you know, instead of going for a coal fire plant that could have produced so much uh, emissions to actually pollute the environment, you displace that emissions that that plant could have produced and have actually replaced that power plant with a wind power system. You know. So that is that is our third point. You know. uh, uh, and then um, wind power also has some negative impacts, you know. Uh, the visual impact of wind turbines you know, that has to do with uh, you know, how 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 there are changes you know in the landscape due to the wind turbines you know that have been placed in position. You know, we also have noise. You know, the turbine actually produces some noise, especially when it's when it's when it's uh, working at very high speeds. You know. And then uh, there is also some form of interference with electromagnetic radiation. You know, being radio waves, TV waves, and all that. Uh, there's some level of interference, you know. And then we also have land use impacts, uh, where land that could have otherwise been used for something else, you know, it's rather used for wind power development. So that uh, could also be a negative impact, you know, because uh, instead of using it for something else that could have been beneficial, we call it beneficial to, to the locality, uh, then uh, we've rather install wind power systems. So we've, we've um, and then there's also bad interaction with wind turbines or beds, interaction with beds. You know. There's a tendency for beds to actually fly into moving turbine blades, you know, killing them. You know. So all these ones and the other considerations and other ones that have to do with any other negative impact that I've been described here. Uh, <coughs> so all these, you know, <coughs> are some of the negative uh, impacts associated with wind power technology. We would actually go into them one after the other. Now we go into the visual impact, you know. Visual impact as I've explained before, you know, basically has to do with aesthetic issues, you know, uh, the landscape as a result of uh, installation of the wind turbines. Uh, and uh, the degree of visual impact is actually influenced by several factors, you know, some of which are the type of landscape, whether you have mountainous, you know, areas, you know, you have uh, Valley, you know, and all that, and then you know the number and design of turbines, you know, the number of turbines, how many turbines do you have at up at what place, and then how are they designed? You know, 
are they horizontal axis, vertical axis, if they're horizontal axis, you know, how long or short are the blades, you know. And then <coughs> how are they arranged, you know, the pattern of arrangement for the turbines also actually uh, affect actually the view of the landscape and then uh, the color of the turbines also, you know, can actually you know be a sort of concern, a visual concern, and then the number of blades of the turbine also. So <coughs> Uh, when going through visual impact assessment, you know, uh, these are some of the things that uh, generally are considered during uh, uh, visual impact assessment of wind power uh, projects. First is the project description, you know, what kind of project, you know, the wind power project, you know, so what's the capacity and all that, uh, how much land. That, that is going to cover. You know. And then the project visibility, appearance, landscape, and context. Where exactly is uh, these turbines, where exactly are these turbines going to be installed? All those things, how we would have to be considered during a visual impact assessment. And then the scenic resource values and sensitivity levels. You know. the, 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 the resource of the area, you know, is it a forest area, is it, uh, is it, is it a bare land, a desert area, and all that? You know, and uh, if you bring in these wind power plants, how different is going to change you know, how the place already looks. Uh, now the assessment <coughs> of the steady impact, how beautiful would a view of the particular landscape be you know, before and after the installation of the turbines? You know, all these things would have to be simulated to, to totally tell the degree that uh, these installations are going to affect the landscape of the particular area. And then uh, after going through all this, then the final decision is made whether to actually accept uh, this particular project or not, based on the visual impact assessment that has been done. So these are quite very simple uh, steps and procedures to actually uh, go through doing assessment. Now we move on to wind turbine noise. You know, as 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 already explained in detail in your material, you know, <coughs> wind turbines actually produce. Uh, noise, especially when they are actually working on moving at high speeds. And the noise has been categorized into four types of uh, you know, the tonal noise, you know, where the noise is made of discrete frequencies, you have the broadband noise, you know, where you have continuous distribution of sound pressure within, you know, or greater than a certain frequency range, which is about 100 hertz. Then yeah, there's a low frequency, which is also you know, noise or sound within a certain range, about 20 to about 100 hertz. And then there's an impulsive sound too. You know, being sure the acoustic impulse is not very, you know, uh, in the amplitude with, with time. All the de all these uh, categories of uh, wind turbine noise have been explained in detail in the material in very clear, simple language. Uh, and then we move on to some causes of wind turbine noise. You know, we have uh, Aerodynamic causes and then we have mechanical causes for the noise. Aerodynamic causes are produced by the flow of air over the blades, you know, so uh, the, the aerodynamic nature, you know, how the blades interact with the air and all that, you know, those produce that kind of sound. And then there's a mechanical noise to that originates from a mechanical component within the turbine, you know, uh, the gearbox, for instance, the generator, you know, the yaw drives, you know, turning the turbine to phase direction. And some other auxiliary equipment like the hydraulic system, and they all produce noise, or they also produce sound. You know, so uh, those sounds come or are, is, is, uh, are categorized in you know, the mechanical, mechanical sounds of uh, of, of uh, wind turbine. Now, the, the the other effect, you know, that wind power plant can have uh, is a electromagnetic interference. You know, uh, I've explained initially that. Uh, Wind turbines, when operation, have the tendency to actually interfere uh, with any form of uh, uh, some forms of electromagnetic radiation. The common one has been the uh, television waves, you know, those are radio waves, and all that. You know. The tendency for the turbines of installation to actually distort these radiations, you know, or diffract them in different directions, and all that. You know. the, the details of these effects are actually explained quite in very simple language uh, in, in, in the material. I don't expect anyone of you to have any problems with, with, with explanations. <coughs> and uh, 
there are some 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 key parameters that influence you know the extent of the electromagnetic radiation. Uh, some some of them are, are listed here. The type of wind turbine, you know, being vertical or horizontal, as even the design of the wind turbine, the dimensions of the turbine, how big or small the turbine is, how big or small the blades are, you know, the span, the rotational speed of the turbine also, you know, and what material is used to construct the blade. You know, the blade construct the material is also very important. You know, the angle, you know, the geometry of the blade, how it looks like, or how it has been shaped. You know, they all go to affect you know, the extent to which these wind turbines can actually uh, cause uh, interference with uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation. And then the tower geometry, how big, you know, the shape of the tower, rectangular, circular, tubular, you know, all, all kinds of. Uh, and then there's also the land use impacts. Uh, that is, uh, lands that could have otherwise been used for other beneficial things, you know, being taken and used for wind farms. Uh, potential lands are often used for agriculture, grazing, recreation, open space, scenic areas, you know, forest management. You know. So all these also go to affect, you know, or all these effects uh, and come, come into a land use impact. Uh, uh, typically, especially even, even for, for, for farms, uh, uh, where, where my crops, food crops, and all that's been good for food crops and all that. It's, it's normally in, in, in most of these advanced countries that use uh, these wind power technology, they, they actually use the, the land, you know, at the base of the turbines, you know, for farms and all that. It's purely very compatible. But in a case where you have uh, reserves, you know, like uh, you have beds, you know, where some game reserve with beds flying and all that, then it wouldn't be very advisable to go in for a wind power installation at that particular place because by the time you realize you see most of the beds being killed or being, being uh, uh, by, by the wind turbine blades killing them. So all these are some of the impacts you know, categorized into land use and all that. And then the best strikes have as uh, as have uh, previously explained. Uh, there's a tendency for birds to totally fly into wind turbine blades and, and get killed. You know, all kinds of birds. So there's also very huge concern, you know, about uh, uh, fanatics, fanatics of wildlife. You know. So all these things would also have to be considered. Uh, uh, if, if, if typically, uh, there's a need to go into some wind power and isolation. The tendency for the birds to get is repeated from the electronics of a turbine. Uh, uh, because of this uh, killing the birds and all, there's a tendency for uh, for this to change the birds' foraging habits. You know, uh, there's a tendency for this to actually displace the remaining birds to, to, to move elsewhere, to, to actually leave. Uh, so this can actually alter the migration habits of the birds, you know, or reduce the available habitat of the birds, you know, in the particular landscape. Uh, and then the effect goes on and on and on uh, and on. There's also another effect called the shadow flicker effect, you know, where uh, moving blades of a turbine cast moving shadows uh, on, on typical residential places. This, this, this shadow flicker effect is not really a big deal in places where uh, there are no residential buildings, where wind turbines are installed, you know, far deep into, into, into some areas where no residential is there. But, but in, a, in an instance where you have this one farm, you know, being close up to residential places, uh, then this flipping effect could, could actually be a nuisance to, 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 to uh, for certain people, you know, uh, psychologically it can even affect certain people. So uh, that is that is the shadow shadow flicker effect, and then the, the instances where you have uh, the wind turbine blades being uh, very glossy, or very polished enough to reflect uh, sun radiation and all that, then you can equally have a situation where you have radiation sun light from the sun being reflected directly onto some building, you know, and because the blades are moving, then you have, you have this kind of flashing effect, so the light keeps flashing. And trust me, this can also be a very huge nuisance. Uh, but normally, this flicking effect normally happens during the daytime when the sun is shining. You know, uh, 
that is when uh, it's really a cause, uh, cause for concern. There are several other uh, environmental and safety considerations, you know, impact on flora and fauna, for instance, you know, there's a forest area, how is it going to impact, you know, from, you know, on the forest area, you know, where's the tallest tree, how are the heights of that, and is that going to interfere with the movement of the blades, so it doesn't mean that if the turbine is installed, we need to cut down the very tall trees and all that, you know, all these are considerations. Then there's also safety. In the case of an accident, you know, when a, a blade, you know, breaks off and begins to fly away, uh, there's a cause of concern. It has happened before, you know, where blades are uh, flying. Sometimes you can have the turbines exploding, you know, but sometimes you can have the foundation of the turbine collapsing, you know, or, or the turbine being catching fire, you know, or even in snowy weather and all that, you know, we find the blades, you know, throwing ice. In several different directions. If this is to land on a human being, you know, it can be a very much huge concern. So all these are environmental considerations that have to be considered or looked at, you know, at, uh, when making a decision to actually go fully with the wind power production. So uh, this basically brings us to the end of this particular presentation uh, at this point i'd like to thank you all for your attention thanks so much and bye bye